So LSNA has been around for like 60 years, um, and it's mainly focused on, uh, it, it's a coalition of a bunch of different organizations, and the main goal is really socioeconomic and racial equity. So um, it's a really powerful grassroots organization. A lot of people come together for common goals, whether that be protesting or um, you know, putting pressure on politicians for things that are important to us as a community. Um, and then my um, role and all of our roles this summer, we are youth, uh, youth organizers in the housing department. So housing has a really important um, kind of role in Logan Square because of the gentrification that's been happening in the past couple decades. Um, people are being displaced as the rent goes up, so we really fo focus on fighting for affordable housing. That's part of the work we do at LSNA. It's, the majority of it is like this gra these grassroots issues and we really get to the nick of that. And we know that local politics is the most consequential, but it often gets the least amount of attention. The crowning achievement at LSA in recent years has been Emmett Street. Um, it's kind of just been a kind of an act of like, almost like an act of rebellion against the gentrification because you, you go into the heart of Logan Square and you see this kind of giant affordable housing complex and it reminds everyone that like there's still people here that are working for um, affordable housing despite everything else that's going on. And there was, um, in the lead up to its accomplishment, there was a lot of like rallies, right? Like kind of rallies and lobbying and like a lot, it was kind of like people really getting together and like having a goal and working towards it and now it was it was really accomplished. So Emmett Street, the building has kind of been a uh, motivation to keep working for similar things. So now we have a lot of other projects that we're kind of trying to make Emmett Street part two. I think that gets at a fundamental thing of gentrification, like in terms of changes, like is that when we look at a certain change and we say, is it good or is it bad? Kind of because a lot of people say gentrification is good because you're just improving the community and how can you say an improvement is bad? Um, and the easy way to explain it is we ask ourselves every time there's something new, why, like what is this coming for and who is it intended for and who is going to benefit? Those kind of questions kind of reveal to us what sorts of things we like and what sorts of things we don't because you'll see a lot of positive developments that objectively are nice and yet we don't want them in our backyard because they are not for our people and they are to help a different demographic that's not Logan Square's community. Yeah, and I think gentrification is just inherently segregating. I mean, like, the, the we're kind of seeing, like, another phase of, of mo like, movement, I think, of um, the demographic movement, kind of, because in the past, uh, kind of, a lot, there was obviously white flight into the suburbs, and, um, you know, people didn't want to be, white people didn't want to be in the, in the inner city, be in the city. Uh, there was also with a lot of, you know, redlining um, with, it, there's just a lot of historic trends that have segregated the city. And now, um, something that Christian tells us a lot about is how now people in the suburbs are kind of realizing, oh, Chicago's where it's at, Chicago's interesting, you know, it's it's fun, there's there's nightlife, there's food, we want to move there. And now there's like almost a new phase of people, wealthy white people coming in from the suburbs and kind of just like wreaking havoc on, on everything. So, yeah. And uh, we have a very proud of our parent mentor program. Um, it started off as like a smaller initiative that has grown like gigantic in our works. Um, so one of the most proudest things that has happened recently is that we get an eight million dollar increase to our budget so that we can spend on the re. Um, so it's basically a yeah, it's a huge victory for us because we have way more resources for not uh, for our parents. So the parent mentor program is we have a program where we're able to include parents from 
like locally to uh, work at their school uh, within the classroom. So they're basically a teacher aide. Um, the teacher is able to help um, get more, you know, just get more help so that uh, they're can ask the parent, hey, can you check on this one student? Um, he might need a little more help or one-on-one. -on -one, uh, I've lived in Logan Square over 20 years now, so like my mom was a part of a paramentor program when I was in school, and that was like around early 2000s, late 2000s. My mom came here as an immigrant, and that was kind of a place where like I didn't feel like unsafe in my school because my mom was there. My mom, I met a lifelong friends because of the parent mentor program at LSNA. My mom was a parent mentor and got to meet other parents. And usually it's like Hispanic moms that really want to be a part of their children's school. So like, um, it was really cool to see my mom work on her skills and like, obviously their process has changed now since like 15 years ago, but the the skills that they teach the parents at LSNA is really like, I don't think any other organization is doing it like we are. Uh, we should highlight also is uh, getting in La Placita um, because it's also like one of the um, bigger things we've accomplished. So um, where right now is I think, I think Milwaukee. Um, where at Logan's Ruby Line. Yeah, right at, uh, where the Eagle is. Um, that area is getting transformed to like a uh, bigger green space to be more walkable, like family friendly. Um, because like as Gary mentioned, uh, before it was like the mega mall where people and families would go and um, spend time together like on the weekends. And I feel like La Placita will be um, getting back to that where you have a space that you are comfortable to go outside, hang out with your family, you know, have a picnic, plan a barbecue, you know. Um, and so it very much just brings back the whole idea of like the community coming together and being like this big family that has um, all this like good positiveness to share with each other like by just hanging out in a big green space. And the reason it was a, such a victory for us is because the Chicago Department of Transportation explicitly agreed to call it La Placita and sort of designed this to be a Latin American style uh, Placita because we really needed to f create more spaces where representation was actually going on and people felt like this was their neighborhood still. Um, so that was really important for us.